Hi, everybody, and welcome to our, our webinar this week from Professional Beauty and Hairdressing Journal Ireland. And this week we are joined by Margot Kenny, who is the manager of Halo Hair Design in, am I correct, Ballymahan, County Longford? Correct, yes, that's correct. And uh, Margot's also the technical educator with ASP. So uh, we were planning on talking today about um managing a salon to maximize your profits now um we were saying before we went live that uh, we weren't expecting to be doing the webinar um on day one of the new lockdown <laughs> which means that unfortunately um all the hair and beauty salons around the country are closed again for six weeks but uh i guess that doesn't stop us either discussing um you know salon management any we'll 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 talk about it anyway, as we were going to talk about it and, and the different tips that you have, but we'll we'll bring in the whole idea that like at the moment, uh, any salon manager is now uh, not actually working in the salon. Um, so um, I suppose we'll just start off with uh, what I had said I was going to talk to you about, which would have been, um, what do you think yourself are the main traits required to be a good salon manager? Yeah, um, hi everybody, um, and thank you, um, professional hair and beauty, for having me on, and Katrina. Um, so I actually think that planning in advance is, is a huge um, step in managing the salon. So I would always start very early in the morning. I would be in early to plan the day ahead, um, scheduling the staff with their appointments and that. Good organisation. Um, obviously a good staff behind you. So a good team behind you makes your life easy. So it makes my life as a manager easy. And of course, leadership. So basically with those points is once you're organized, it makes life easy. And I'm one of these people who like to be up early, get in, get organized and get the ball rolling. Um, and leadership it would be kind of taking charge, but getting the staff involved in the everyday running of the salon, letting them take charge of their appointments and um, scheduling their clients in, even um, going to social media. I like them to take charge of their own chair, their own clients and promoting themselves on social media. I think that is a huge thing that if their involvement is more, then it makes my life easier. So I just think, um, good organization good planning and leadership is um a good key to managing the salon okay and do you do you think um are you a believer in that just there when you mentioned leadership that you know a good leader isn't the, the leader that sort of tells people what to do all the time that it's like it's kind of an all-inclusive with the staff well we would have meetings and being honestly um i would think um if you're a good leader, it does help the staff because they know they can come to you for direction. And by me encouraging them and inspiring them, and if I'm enthusiastic and passionate about doing my job, then they're obviously going to feed off that off me. So that comes from me as a leader, directing them and encouraging them to push themselves a little bit more and be more productive in the salon. Um, we all get comfortable in our own little niche and we all like doing one particular thing, but we can get become very stagnant in that. So I have to push them that they will push their goals and boundaries a little bit further. It's for their own um, education. It's for their own help, like further down the road. Like everybody knows staff doesn't stay with you forever. They move on. And it's nice that they're moving on with a good variety of skills rather than being just one particular skill it leaves it easier for them to get work so by me taking direction and focusing on them and pushing them it just gives makes them the better stylist really and it makes better productivity from the salon okay and in the in terms of you know the day-to-day -day running um of the salon um do you see like are there certain kinds of issues that would come up over and over again that you can almost see them coming a mile away it's like you have to deal with them constantly i don't know it's probably um, a hairdresser's intuition or maybe it's just part of managing you always know you get that um that little inkling that there's something isn't right with staff i suppose if you're working with staff for 
a long time. You you know their personalities, you know their traits, you know when they're feeling not themselves. So you always know there's something coming. But the main issue would be, I suppose, taking time off. And I, I did feel, and actually I was speaking to um, the accountant, and she was saying just after lockdown, a lot of stylists didn't want to go back working weekends. They didn't want to do Saturdays. But unfortunately, with the job we're in, um, Saturdays would be your main busiest day. Now, probably not so much since we came back out of lockdown because there was nowhere for people to go and our weddings were off. But where they really wanted their weekends off. And yes, we could appreciate that. Now, we did look at it as an all round thing because there's a good few staff here that where maybe we could balance it, where they could get maybe one Saturday off in the month, where um, before that it was they were always wondering, at, you know, could they have a weekend off or scheduling themselves out in the book. So we did look at going forward that they could have share the month and have a Saturday off each month so that they would be having one Saturday off every month. I think that is the major issue that I suppose when you work on a Saturday, it shortens your weekend. And I, by them having the Saturday off, it means they have a longer weekend every month as well as their bank holidays. Now, we do, we do put in place that bank holidays are a no-go, that we don't give the bank holiday weekends off because we feel that works well, because everybody loves their bank holiday weekend off. But then if everybody was to have it off, it isn't um, great for the salon. But um, that would be one of the, one of the issues. Another one would be um, speed and time, um, checking the clock. It's just get it into your head that this client is in, I've got 40 minutes to do this client. And not rushing the client either, because you like to give enough time. But when we come back after lockdown, we gave a longer time to each client. So watching the clock and making sure that that client was running as smooth as possible so that our next client was moving in and you weren't running behind because the aim was that you didn't overlap clients in the salon. Um, so that for me would be two of the issues on a day to day, just making sure that they were keeping on top of their schedule. Um, other than that, no, they're a good, you know, I find it's easy because we work as a team and if there's a problem, they'll come to me. So there's never really a major issue, but just those two that stood out for me since lockdown, that we had to be more particular okay. about. Yeah, and that, I suppose that leads into the, the next question that I was going to ask about managing staff and rosters. And you sort of touched on it there about, you know, how much did that change after you reopened mm. Because I guess, um, I don't know, like with your own salon, did you work? How did you, did you do the whole, like, because there had to be like less people in, in the, the space? Did you open longer hours and did you do like different rostered shifts? Um, and then I suppose, again, how did that clash almost with people coming back from lockdown? And, and uh, was it that people came back um, after having some, time out and sort of time to themselves that they decided you know oh, oh i really appreciate my time off and i'd like a little bit more of it was that how it worked i think it was yeah it was it was kind of like a culture shock when they came back because we did have a meeting um prior to come back and we went through all the health and safety and then i went through the rostering with them so the way i worked it was i um wrote down all the staff members i wrote down their best um skills so some of them were more better at one thing than the other because we tend to when we like something we lock on to it and so we focus on that and we do that to our best because we're more passionate about it because we love it so i utilize their skills so as the bookings were coming in i sat down and i looked at would say if um my highlighting clients and i would um put one of the, the, the girl that loved on the highlights with them because she would be more passionate and she would give more time. And I worked it, it down like that. Then we split the shifts. We did from half seven in the morning till half eight at night. So one would come in from half seven to two and the, the others then would split the shifts and come in from two to eight. Now, the way I left it for them was because it was aware, it was a big change to them because they were used to working from nine to six. So mm -hmm. I, what I said to them was, okay, there's your list of clients. So if 
when you finished your last client, if it was at six o'clock, you were free to go. It didn't mean you have to stand around because remember, we were working by appointment only. So we knew exactly who was coming in. We weren't waiting for a footfall to come in. So that was fine. So I allowed them to go home to have that extra time. So I, I, it did work well. It was a bit of a culture shock. And I suppose for them coming back, having time home with their families. And then remember, everything began to open up. So you were allowed to go on a staycation. So then it came to the stage where possibly they wanted to go away on a staycation for the weekend because they'd been locked down for so long. <laughs> so I felt, well, look, they were working so hard. Yes, I said, look, if they booked it out among themselves, block them out. So I knew not to schedule them in any appointments. And it just, it did, it worked well. Some of them, it probably didn't work as well. And probably, you know, that that was it. Like, yeah, we lost one member because, but that's, look, it, that's the way it goes. The hours probably weren't the same. And it's very hard to adjust when you're used to one thing, you know. But all in all, it worked really well. And we continued doing that up to September. And then, then we went back to our regular hours. So it's, you know, okay. I guess they know what's facing them in December when we go back. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to, to ask you. You know, like as a manager now, um, you had to go through it once, I suppose, in the beginning when we went into lockdown first. And as you and I were saying earlier on the first time, I suppose it was just, we were all in shock. We didn't really understand what was happening mm. whereas now it's after happening again now i know that like the industry got let's say a 48 hour warning um yeah. but did you feel yourself as as somebody who's managing a salon did you have a little bit of a gut feeling even before we got the 48 hour warning and were you prepared for that and how like how are you managing and how did you manage your staffing say at the beginning of this week now and even now like going forward into the next six weeks well it's funny before the first lockdown i had seen it coming and i had actually called a meeting the week before and i said look there's something going to happen i don't know it was just bits were coming through in the in the media and that and so i had actually taken them in and i had said look there is something coming i can't guarantee what is going to happen or whether we are going to be able to keep everybody on because I thought I actually didn't think we were going into lockdown. I thought it was going to slow completely down. Um, so this time we were more prepared and obviously everybody knows what's coming because everybody is watching the media. So what I said to the girls was be prepared and utilize the time you have off. Now it was a big, because we had 48 hours, I meant we had to do a lot harder work in the three days, which you wouldn't be doing. So um, everybody dug in and everything was good, but it was an eerie feeling yesterday. Um, even the girls were saying how they felt it very strange. And possibly the first lockdown, they didn't feel it as strange because everybody finished on the Saturday evening um, thinking we were coming back to work and then everything stopped all of a sudden. Whereas this time you were prepared for it coming and it just felt a little bit more eerie. And of course, the uncertainty of knowing whether you will be back in six weeks or not, I suppose that worries them as well. But look, as I said, you have to be positive. It is six weeks. Look how the time flew in the other lockdown. Utilize your time, re-educate yourself, go back to basics, get out your color star. Really practice on something that you feel you're not fully confident on and come back a new person and willing to be dig yourself in. And I think the time will fly. We don't often get this time to sit back and reassess things before the mad rush of Christmas. So I think be positive and use the time creatively, really. Yeah, and I guess that's the thing, um, you know, you're possibly, you know, fingers crossed that, you know, everything reopens on the 1st of December, you're going to be <laughs> facing into a, a, a Christmas uh, yeah. rush and yeah. a post lock down surge so i suppose maybe that's the that's the worrying thing because you know of the christmas rush you know what it entails and then you've got this sudden surge of people where we would probably be starting the christmas rush maybe the second last week of november whereas now you've got three weeks to fit the whole lot in you know but yeah and how, how have you managed um your your appointment book 
say that for the like because I, I just noticed on social media over the last couple of days like different salons seem to be doing different things some people were like they were you know they opened extended hours for the last few days and they were contacting all the people say that were booked in during the six week period and I did notice even one salon said that they weren't actually taking any appointments for December yet so oh. Like, have you have you figured that one out yet, or is that like a work no, program? But the minute lockdown was announced, obviously you had a certain amount of people ringing to um, try and get in before you closed up. But of course, we were in the middle of renovating the place, which we had built oh, right. Saturday evening, so it meant we had a kind of panic to make the place um, health and safety wise so that we could get a few people in. But most of my clients were actually ringing to book for Christmas. But um, a, prior to this, um, before the first lockdown, we you wouldn't have, clients weren't as quick to rebook in. But when they came back, when we were back after lockdown, they were very cleverly rebooking themselves back in for four, for six weeks. So that continued. So... We had a lot of the appointments were filled for December anyway. So, and then in the last three days, we had the amount of people ringing to book in their Christmas appointments. So we have actually quite a lot of appointments in. The one thing we didn't want was to go back to having to six, 600 odd customers to contact to get them in. So we said it was better to put them in now and keep rotating them. So we will contact them a week before and we'll say, does this appointment time still suit you? If it doesn't, we can juggle it around. And of course, we'd have a waiting list if they need to cancel that we can put somebody else in. I think it, going forward, it was the best way to do it. Um, now, bearing in mind, hopefully, that we are back in six weeks because it, come with its, it could come with its own problems if we don't, aren't back in six weeks, if we're back in mm -hmm. seven weeks because we'll have that week to... Um, contend with. Yeah. What I did was I left Sundays free, which we will open Sundays, which means I have a good gap there. If need be, yeah. I can push those clients forward. Yeah. Yeah. I did find the hardest thing when was trying to fit the appointments in. It took us a good week to get them all sorted because I found you were better off doing it in the evening time rather than during the day because a lot of people were back working. So you got a quicker response to your message or your phone call in the evening time than you did during the day yeah okay and then you know you're a stylist yourself and you you actually work in the salon as a, a stylist don't you i do indeed. yeah yeah that's yeah that's what I, I was coming on to there and you i suppose you kind of again you kind of alluded to it there when you were saying about like get it texting clients in the evening you know for you yourself like you're managing the salon and you're managing all the people but you're also working on the salon floor and how do you balance both those things is that very difficult to balance and do you find it eats into your all your time i look if, if you ask one of the um staff that they would say look you're a workaholic <laughs> <laughs> And I suppose um, I do, I manage the salon and I'm a stylist in the salon. And of course I work freelance for ASP as well. So but obviously that's at the moment now that has, it's, it has, they're all gone on Zoom education. But um, look, basically I do a lot of work behind the scenes. So if nor our normal hours are nine to six, so I will be in the salon at eight in the morning. So I will probably get either get my uh, some of my customers will be started at it. They're early risers like me. <laughs> so and then in the evening, yes, you are doing a lot of work behind the scenes. But uh, I'm very passionate about my work. Um, I love it. I don't see it as work, um, and I suppose that's probably why I I enjoy it and I, I like managing the salon and I like working on the floor as a stylist because when the girls see me working. And being passionate about it, it actually, you know, encourages them as well. So, yeah, I, I love, I won't say my job, it's a hobby, which it's a hobby, a paid hobby. <laughs> but I do, yeah, I enjoy it, yeah. I'm very passionate about it. And like, as I said, the salon is here for 30 years. And um, no, I really love it, yeah. 
So yeah. it's kind of like you're, um, you don't really, you're not that bothered about trying to balance, you know, the work life thing because the salon's kind of your life's work almost. Yeah, because when the first lockdown came in, it, that, that was the thing. I didn't know what to do with myself <laughs> and, uh, because I had never been, I'd never had that length at home. I've never yeah. had holidays as I've had this year. Um, but you see, it was finding that balance then at home that, um, right, what am I going to do with myself now? Bear in mind, I did enjoy it and I fit it right in after about three weeks. I thought, you know, I actually am enjoying this. But we did a lot of um, behind the scenes work when we were off in the first lockdown. And um, I had a junior staff, which I did a lot of um, training with her as well, which gave her a real boost and it brought her up and put her on the floor. So which was really good as well. Look, social media is brilliant and it did keep you in contact. There's loads of courses out there for people to do. So I, of course, got stuck into all these courses, marketing courses, and got involved in all them, which kept me going and kept me in touch, really, with the, the hair side of business, yeah. Okay, and do you think in general, <clears throat> to be, you know, a good manager, it's important to delegate? Or, you know, do you have sort of certain people in charge of little different things around the place? Or do you tend to do it all yourself? No, <laughs> no, I probably would be guilty of that. No, actually, this, the team we have are very good. They, they've been with me for a long, long time, and they are very good at seeing what has to be done. But if you're not a good delegator, there's no point in being a manager and trying to do it all yourself. It won't yeah. work. You have to delegate. And that is so important, given um, the girls' little things to do you know, stock take or even down to ringing in an order or doing an order for you. These are little things that encourages them to be part of the salon. So once you involve them in that and delegate little jobs to them, they feel part of the business. So they'll be more passionate, more enthusiastic. And I'd also say, I, I'd also listen to them. They would come to me with an idea and I would listen. So, yeah, do you know, that would work. Let's give that a go. I wouldn't be kind of like, no, we can't do that because, they, it, you know, for them, they have to feel part of it as well. You know, it, it has to encourage them to, they have to be as passionate about the business as I have, or it won't work. Yes. Yeah, so we all dig in. I have a good team behind me, so it, it does make my life easy. Yes. Yeah. And I know you had said to me about customer care that, and um, I think like after service, maintenance and um, that that was very important to you um, can you maybe explain a little about, bit about the customer care element of it and how you ensure that the client gets the best for their hair yeah so basically customer care to me it has to be a very friendly atmosphere so once that client comes into you they have to feel they're the most important person to you when they're in that chair your focus has to be totally on them you have to be understanding and listen to them um, they're coming to you they want to hear your options and they want to hear your alternatives they're not coming to you they they're not coming to you to be to hear negative views so i always say to the stylist if somebody is in front of you and their hair is in bad condition and it really needs a revamp it really needs nourishing I'd say focus on that. Don't tell them, oh my God, your hair is just terrible. Mm -hmm. or, because they're coming to you for a feel good factor. They wouldn't be sitting in the chair if they knew their hair was really, really healthy. I, I always say never ever comment on another stylist's job. That client wouldn't be sitting in front of you, a new client say, wouldn't be sitting in front of you if they didn't know that they needed something corrected on their hair never run down yeah. another business. i mean i think it is so important that they're there for your advice they're there for your understanding and they want you to give them alternative options on how to get healthy hair so the most important thing is for you to educate yourself on the products you're using because you cannot explain to the client unless that education isn't there and 
also they must feel safe in your hands and if you are there and you are saying oh god your hair now god that's an off job that's that, that oh my god well they're automatically thinking is well what are they going to say about me when I leave? So you never, never run down anybody else because look at you're only as good as the last job you put out the door. So once you give your client a hundred percent, let them feel so important, give them reassurance. Now consultation is a key factor. And we did most of the consultations over the phone. If there were a new client to us and there were a color correction, they would have to come into us and have a number one they all have to have skin test 48 hours but they also would have to have a strand test and an incompatibility test and it's not that they would have been using home colors or anything but if you don't use your incompatibility test you will not determine whether there is a buildup of minerals from their water or medication in their hair and that can have an adverse effect on the client's hair so consultation is key under promise and over deliver, I say to the girls, if they come in looking for something that's way off the scale, mm -hmm. explain to them, tell them that it's going to be a process. Well and good if you get them in one or two goals. That's a bonus to the client. They will think you're brilliant. But never promise I'm going to get you here when it isn't achievable in that one sitting. So again, it's back to education client, really. Okay, and the around the giving the clients the best after service maintenance, I guess that ties in a little bit with what I was mm. going to ask you at the end of our chat about the retail offering, um, which um, I think when I, I put together my questions for you, it was before we knew about lockdown, I think. Yes. But anyway, I, I suppose the, the retail offering is something that I suppose a lot of salons we're already doing, but it really came to the fore in, in lockdown. So is that something that like, since we, I was going to say since we've come out of lockdown, we haven't, we're gone back in, but say the bit in between, <laughs> the, in the middle, um, did you find that, that, that retail offering that people were more, um, cause I know that I've spoken to a few different um, stylists in the last while, and they said that what's really trending now in terms of what clients are looking for since lockdown, clients became a little bit more focused on they really want healthy hair. Yeah. So I found yeah, that in the last lockdown, and we would have always done um, quite a lot of retail anyway. And I did what we did. We did a lot on social media. So we were telling clients, you know, that we had this available and um, semi permanent colors. Um, we were able to retail them out to the clients, which we would do anyway for a top up in between services. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, during lockdown, it became the salvation of a lot of sal salons because they were able to get the And then, of course, you had the grant, which was um, allowed a lot of salons sell online. So we did, right, uh, yeah. which was really, really good. And being honest, in quiet times in the salon, retail is a huge boost to any salon because you are going to hit pockets of quiet time we always have so if you're doing your retail it actually boosts your takings which is a benefit and as we explain to the clients that if we do a beautiful job in your hair and it's lovely and healthy it is important that they maintain the health of the hair going forward so we always encourage them to buy our products. What we use at the back wash um, is what we will retail out to them. But knowing your product is very important. Um, knowing the ingredients that you can explain to the client that this is the ingredient that will actually benefit your hair. There's no point in them picking up a product and saying, oh, I love the smell of this. Can I have this? Mm -hmm. Yes, the smell is lovely, but it mightn't be beneficial to your hair because if you have fine hair and it's too heavy, it's going to have a bad effect. So again, it's educating the client. Even back to client care, we always um, teach the client that when you have a full head of highlights, your highlights, we put a toner on it. That toner is only a surface color. It is semi-permanent, it will wash off. They need to return to you because your hair, once it washes off, will become dull and brassy. In between your highlighting service, we encourage them to come back for a toner. 
So that is, again, that's a boost to our revenue. So it's educating them. You need your toner. That is only a semi-permanent. It isn't going to last. In between highlighting services, we offer the toner. We try to encourage them to keep the hair because everybody wants healthy hair now. Coming back after lockdown, everybody was more aware that their hair was healthier because mm. they weren't getting a huge buildup of color in their hair. We would have always told them that you do not need more highlights to lift the brassy warm tones out of your hair. It is a toner that is going to neutralize them. And that's the service that you need. And we have found that our revenue probably has boomed up because they are booking in every four weeks for their toner after their highlighting or balayage or color service. And um, it is a real good way of drumming up that little bit of business as well. And it's a great way of getting your juniors because your semi, your toner, the junior can apply it at the base. It's a great way of get introducing them to the client and building up their clientele as well. So everything benefits really the salon if, we, if you sit back and look at it. So basically, yeah, all the, all the clients do go home with their home care. But another big thing that I, we've noticed is the um, hard water system. So we have start, introduced a new um, product to the salon, which removes the buildup of hard water. And th this okay. is lockdown, and this seems to be going really, really well. Um, a lot of people are very interested in this, and it is a really good service to have because once we start coloring the hair, that buildup is gone. So we don't have anything causing adverse effect on the buildup on the hair. You know, when you use it and there's minerals in the hair or hard water, it can cause an adverse effect. It can stop the coloring process. So this as well is a huge bonus. So there is loads of options out there to build up your revenue, basically. But it's all about educating yourself and the client to having it done. Okay, great. And um, before I let you go, um, I just wanted to ask, you know, like going into now as a manager, six weeks um, of lockdown, are you, you know, do you have a plan in place of what you're going to do? Are you going to, you know, like, again, as we said, like it's the time of year, it's, it's a very good time for, um, you know, selling gift vouchers, mm -hmm. gift sets. So are you, do you feel like quite equipped going into the lockdown or like, I suppose, do you see yourself being busy for the next six weeks? I, yeah, look, we, of course, we were all prepared for the lockdown and at this time of the year, we are preparing for Christmas anyway. So basically we would be doing an, a lot of work on the social media side of things because we want to get our um, social media platform set for when we hit um December well, obviously we'll probably start rolling it maybe the second last week in November so that you have them that bank there so that all you do is press the button that it will go up on social media you won't have time for re-evaluating and popping it up on social media mm. they we of course everybody a lot of the companies had um sent out their gift packs and everything so a lot of salons have them we have the Christmas gift packs so yes we will be available for click and collect over the next six weeks and obviously for the shampoo and conditioners for for the clients um no there is a lot of work behind the scenes because obviously we're extending the salon so i have that to get out of the way first so that's going to keep me busy over the next week and then we should be ready to roll for christmas i i i, I do anticipate that um, the six weeks will fly be positive karina <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, look, looking forward to the uh, and uh, yeah into the Christmas rush. Um, listen, that was that was really lovely. It was it was actually great to um, we timed it well. You know that we we had arranged to do this webinar um, today. Like we didn't yeah. know that it was going to be, but it, it was really nice to talk to a salon manager on day one of you know. Lockdown. I'm sitting here in the salon on yeah, my own. You know, and just to hear, you know, the positive stuff and to hear, you know, what you can do. And and I suppose to hear you as well, that you're not, you know, you're not despairing. You're kind of like, this is going to fly. This is what we need to do. And fingers crossed, we're going to be absolutely out the door with the surge again. And into them. Look, the, whole, the whole thing Pardon? is stay, stay focused, keep your focus, stay positive. You are going, we are going to come out the other side of it. And 
as I say, you're going to have a busy, busy couple of weeks up to Christmas where, look, hopefully we do get back on the 1st of December. I think we will um, once everybody gets on board with this lockdown. Um, sorry, before I let you go there, um, Sharon Noonan messaged in to say, great interview, and she needs her Christmas appointment, please. <laughs> <laughs> we have you in, Sharon. <laughs> thank you, but Sharon. I, I passed that message on. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you, Selena. Margot Kilkenny from Halo Hair Design in Longford, uh, who will be reopening her salon again on the first. December, fingers crossed. And thanks everybody for tuning in and we will be back again in two weeks time with another webinar. So until then, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.